Okay. Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, you can call us a webinar, we don't mind, <laughs> um, that we ho um, hold every Wednesday morning live at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we do um, a mixture of things here, presentations, interviews, mini training sessions, um, basically anything that is um, related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. Um, we do record all of our shows as well, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, um, that's perfectly fine. You can always go to our website and you can find the recordings of all of our previous shows there. Uh, we do um, have speakers from the Library Commission, our own Nebraska Library Commission come on the show, and we do have guest speakers sometimes. Um, from both in Nebraska and outside. Uh, and today we have a mixture of that. Um, this morning we have um, some people on the line with us and some people next to me here. Um, our topic for today is Library Planning, a Customized Program for Success. And um, some group of people here at the Library Commission and with some of our regional library systems have been putting together this plan to help our libraries do some, um, get themselves up to speed on planning what they need to do. And they'll explain all about that. Um, but I can just, I'll just do some basic introductions. Here next to me, I have uh, Laura Johnson, who is our Continuing Education Coordinator at the Library Commission. Hi, everybody. And Richard Miller, right. across the table here, is the um, Director of uh, Library Development. Sorry, brain freeze. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, how are you? And on the line with us right now, we have two of our system administrators of regional systems here in Nebraska, Denise Harders and um, Sarah Warnicke are on the line as well. And we may have another one on. We'll see if he makes it. Eric Green is our third that was going to possibly be here today. Um, so I'm going to just um, go ahead and hand over to you guys to take over and do your presentation and tell us all about um, what we should be planning for. So who's up first? <clears throat> Hi. <clears throat> I'm sorry. My voice is not at its best today. I have a cold, but we'll get, we'll get through this. Um, we have put together a um, plan for planning for Nebraska Public Libraries because we have some new accreditation guidelines. Um, as you may know, Nebraska has had an accreditation program for public libraries for, oh, what, 20 years? And um, so they were getting the guidelines were getting a little old. And uh, we had a committee that worked on them very hard for quite some time and um, came up with some new Nebraska guidelines for public library accreditation. Uh, you may have seen them, um, but these were officially adopted by the uh, commissioners of the Nebraska Library Commission last Friday. So they are now official. Uh, we will be using them for the accreditation process this year. You can take a look at them if you like here. Um, and this is, I think it's linked to on our front page. Yes. It's linked to on our front page of our website. So um, what, what is the deal with the new accreditation guidelines? Well, they were developed by a committee of Nebraska librarians. We met for, well, over a year. Um, to work out, you know, how, um, a year, three, what, <laughs> what did accreditation really mean, and um, what did we re what was really important? Um, it was felt that it was really important that the accreditation guidelines be more flexible, um, because uh, sometimes one library might not have something in one area, but they're doing really well in another area. Um, so, and they're community-based, which means that um, they speak to the idea that you're fulfilling your community's needs. And um, so that was felt to be really important, and this is what we've come up with to try to have that kind of um, standard for libraries. The committee um, were these people, and let's give them a big thank you. Big round of applause mm -hmm. here for these folks, because they worked very hard. Um, this was not an easy thing to do, uh, to try to work out 
what really makes a library a good library. And that's what they were trying to do. Um, these are more flexible. In the former guidelines, you had to meet every guideline. Um, in the new guidelines, you just for each guideline, there are points that you can earn, and it's how many total points you get at the end. So if you didn't quite make one guideline, you'll make another and make it up. Um, in the former guidelines, when we asked a library to have a particular uh, standard, we had them in size categories, which are more, they were kind of, arbitrary, but, you know, we didn't want to compare very small libraries with fairly good sized libraries, so there were several size categories. Now, with these new guidelines, everyone is going to have essentially a customized category, because they will be put in a category with the libraries that are about the same size as they are. Um, and we think that this is going to be fairer. Um, then the former guidelines had the three E's, um, essential, enhanced, and excellent, <laughs> um, which no one ever remembered, <laughs> including us. So now we're going to call them gold, silver, and bronze. Nice. And we think thank you to the Olympic Committee for that. <laughs> and um, we think that that will uh, be easier for people to remember. Um, so, what about these guidelines? Well, the, um, they are going to be in effect this year. This will be the first year for them, so we'll see. But the schedule is going to be similar to uh, the accreditation schedules that have, we've always had in the past, which is about July 1st, um, notices will be sent to libraries who are up for reaccreditation, because remember, accreditation is a three-year um, period, and so about one-third of our public libraries will be up for accreditation this year, and then to the unaccredited libraries that would like to try to be accredited. So you will get a notice of around the 1st of July. Then around the 1st of October, we would like to have this all completed. Um, people have wondered about, oh, how does this point thing work? Well, you'll see. Um, altogether, if you had everything that these guidelines requested of you, you would earn 275 total points. Um, if you earn at least 250 of these points, you'll have gold. You'll be at the gold level, 200 at the silver level, 175 at the bronze level. And these levels will work as the levels did before in terms of there's slightly more... Um, state aid involved if you get gold level rather than bronze level or silver level. So um, there is um, a um, encouragement to do as well as you can and to improve as you go along, which we thought was good. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about those peer comparisons, um, I, this is actually more confusing to talk about than it is to do. <laughs> Um, it's simply you take, you, you rank all the libraries by size, and you take, you put the library you're talking about, the target library we'll call it, in the middle, and then you have some libraries bigger and some smaller. So the category is always, um, really the library is very closest to the library in terms of who you're being compared to. Um, and um, we, these are the places in the guidelines where the um, comparisons happen. Um, when we ask about your local income, when we ask about your hours, your staff expenditures, your full-time equivalency of staff, how much you're spending on materials, what your circulation is, what your collection turnover is, what your collection size is, and your attendance per capita. Uh, don't let the numbering system throw you. Um, there are like five categories in the accreditation guidelines, and things are numbered, you know, one. Then it's 1.01. 1 .01. And it, so we tried to keep them very, um, tried, the numbers try to keep things straight, and they try to make sure that um, the um, 
what am I trying to say? The, 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 there's a logic. The, yeah, there's a logic too, but the order, the, the um, progression, hierarchy. Hierarchy. <laughs> That's the word, hierarchy. We need a thesaurus. The, the hierarchy of this keeps a, them in a hierarchy so you can see how things are related to one another. Um, it wasn't meant to look um, oh, all officially. It's just it was meant to keep things uh, in order. Um, we've already had a couple of questions. People saying, well, how am I going to know if I can make my peer comparison? What, what's going to happen here? Well, actually, the numbers that we will be using, oh, and that's an important part of this, too. We hope to have your um, application for accreditation pre- um, filled out with the numbers that you have submitted in the Public Library Statistical Survey. Mm -hmm. So um, then, of course, the Public Library Statistical Survey takes on even more significance, and it's awfully important that you do that. And that numbers get reported in um, very consistent ways. But you can look at those Public Library Surveys um, they're here on our website for you to uh, download the numbers if you want so you can figure out uh, where you fit in this. You can also use the um, IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, has a little uh, thing, Compare Public Libraries, where you literally, it will compare your library to other libraries. So it will put you in categories. You tell it what libraries you want to compare your library to. So here are ways that you can always find out um, where you are in your peer comparisons and that will be a mystery. Um, okay, the other thing was about these is they were very much community based. Mm -hmm. um, the idea was that yes, there probably are some important things about libraries that every library should have. In fact, there's a whole, there is a, a set of requirements that a library must have before they can even apply for accreditation. Things like you have to be legally established, you know. Well, everybody's legally established. Um, but, you know, how do you best serve your community? Some communities need some kinds of things, some communities need other things. Um, so we really wanted these things to be community-based. Uh, if the library is fulfilling your community's needs and wants. So how do we figure that out? Well, that's why the guidelines require a plan. The guidelines are going to ask you to have a strategic plan and tell us what <clears throat> the objectives of your plan were in certain areas. So knowing that we were going to ask for a plan, um, we also knew that many libraries have worked very hard on strategic planning and they have plans. But some libraries, for many different reasons, haven't quite. And they kind of maybe are going to need a plan. And so we wanted to find a way for them to get a plan uh, fairly quickly. And um, so what we did is we put together a set of worksheets or templates. And if you fill out these worksheets, then you'll have a plan. Now, this is still not a complete walk in the park, but we think we've made it about as easy as we could. Um, just minimize the, yeah. I'm going to show you these worksheets. Oh. Um, here's the first one, Say, yeah, do that. Um, which is you plan Wait. to plan. Right. Hang on. There we go. Now okay. <clears throat> can, can everybody see it? Okay. Um, this sounds almost redundant. Let's plan to plan. <laughs> but if you put together a schedule 
um, you know kind of when you're going to do certain things, you know who's going to be involved, you're going to have uh, dates when you really need to have it done, it is going to make your planning more successful. So you do need to take a deep breath and kind of figure out what you're going to do before um, you start planning and you will, so this is the first worksheet. Goodness, we have this. Then the second worksheet is a community profile. Now you may have many of these numbers, um, your mayor's office may have them, or your planning department. Um, Can you see this? Let's try that. Okay. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can you see this? Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So what we've done is we've just picked out the um, demographic items that seem to be important, and literally you just fill this out. And we have said um, here, for instance, education. We've asked from the AFF, that's American Fact Finder, that's the Census Bureau, the table that includes these things. So you just go to the American Fact Finder, you find your table, and they've simplified the American Fact Finder. There's new software now, and um, it's really very easy to use. And just fill out this form. Um, it may look, I don't think it looks too formidable, but we thought this was better than having to decide what went and, and where you're going to get the stuff. And it's just fill out the form, you know. Um, then we have worksheet three, and this is perhaps the most time-consuming part of the planning process. Is there, can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. Um, because this is where you need to find out about the community needs. And there are, of course, a number of ways to do this, one of them just being observation of people. But um, you can have a community meeting and ask people. You can have focus groups or key informant interviews, which is you would choose some people who were either very typical of a particular group of people or people who were leaders in a particular group, say the principal of the school or um, the uh, minister at a church would be key informants. They could kind of tell you about the group of people that they represent, what their needs and wants are. You can do a survey, um, but surveys, are, surveys can get kind of um, involved. But there's several ways to do this. And then what you do is you just record everything people say to you. And um, eventually you're going to see the, hear the same things over and over again. So you kind of um, take note of how often people talk about that particular thing. Then you put all the things in order by the frequency of mention and you write down the top 15. Um, so there's 15 things the community needs or wants in, on the worksheet. Then we go to the library. And you already have a lot of information about your library, again, from your public library survey. You've already reported your circulation and your hours open and all those things about the library. Um, so you can look at those. But then you also want to look at your strengths, weaknesses, and your opportunities and threats. Now, this is your SWAT. Um, wow, good old SWAT. SWAT <laughs> chart. But we, what we've done is we've kind of categorized things. So if you have a strength in human resources, say you have a great um, group of volunteers, that's really a strength in your library. The weakness well, maybe you really could use um, another staff person, and that's a weakness in human resources. So you kind of put that down. And you may not have strengths and weaknesses in all these categories, but 
um, you just sort of categorize your strengths and weaknesses. Then you look at your opportunities and threats, and these are things that are really external. Opportunities for your economy. Oh, an opportunity might be that there's a new, um, there's a new plant opening in town. Well, that's definitely an economic opportunity. Um, more people um, coming to town. A threat, um, a plant's closing. Or, um, I don't know, there's, there's been um, a real uh, difficult um, schism in one of the churches or something. So those would be external threats, and those would be things that might affect the library. So you just write those down. Um, and this will kind of give you an idea of where the library is. Then, Worksheet 5, you look at the community needs, you look at what you think the library has, and you choose those needs that you think the library is uniquely suited to fulfill. And you try to figure out how you're going to fulfill that. Um, and you have a goal and a, an objective in mind. And probably you're not going to have more than five goals. That may even be ambitious. But for the period of your strategic plan, and we think a strategic plan will probably last from one to three years, um, you will have goals and say what you would like to accomplish. Then on worksheet six, <clears throat> you talk about how you're going to evaluate how well you did in achieving your goals. And this is really very important because, well, how do you know if you were successful unless you know how you're going to measure? And you do want to be able to measure things. So you need to know what kind of information you need to be collecting along the way. So at the end, when you get to what your measurements, you have them, you have the numbers you need. Um, so you decide at the very beginning how you're going to evaluate. Anyway, and then there is the final sheet, which is the strategic plan for your library. And that's simply um, kind of a summary of, of the other worksheets that you put together. So it's not going to happen in one afternoon. It's not something the director can just fill out by himself or herself. But we do think that this will with a little little work from your board and from some uh, concerned community members, you should be able to get this done fairly quickly within, you know, several weeks or a couple of months. Laura, and you'll have sheet, a strategic plan. Could this sheet be viewed as kind of a table of contents that they would use? It for could sort of be a table of contents or sort of a summary of yeah. what the others are, yes. Um, but I thought we had the six sheets, but maybe it was important to put it all together on one sheet. So you had it. So you will really have a strategic plan that's one piece of paper. Um, I'd like to emphasize a couple things that Laura okay. said. And maybe we want to have uh, uh, Denise and Sarah uh, pipe in as well. One of the things that, that Laura said that is so important is that you choose goals that the public library is uniquely suited to fulfill or to meet. But one of the things when you're putting together the needs of the community, when you come up with the top 15, those aren't needs that necessarily relate to the library. But you do those first because if the library is meeting the needs of the community, it may be something that the library has never done before or is not doing well. So what you're doing is, and the reason she said you look at those and pick out the ones that occur with the most frequency is that then, once you identify those, then you say, well, what is the, li what the li what could the library do? And the example that I always give, and those of you who've heard me say this are probably tired of my saying it, but I remember years ago when I was working and living in Missouri, that one of the things that the branches of the St. Louis Public Library were doing was distributing rat poison in the city. And that's a a unique role. I don't think I've ever heard another library do that, but they had branches throughout the city that were open more hours and evening hours and weekend hours than the city 
offices were, and so those became distribution points for that particular purpose. It certainly isn't a traditional library service, but it is a need that the library was meeting by virtue of the fact that it was open, the number of hours it was open. So be creative and open your mind about what it can do. One of the things that you have heard people say is that if you ask people what they want the library to do, they really usually don't know. They usually say, oh, I like to check out books there. That's what typically people think of, first of all. But if you, as the library director and your board and your planning group, actually investigate the needs of the community, first of all, that's the starting point. So that, for example, if you've had a plant close in town and you have people who are desperate to find work and they need to know how to write resumes or they need, how, need to know how to apply online or they need to find out about unemployment benefits or any of those things, if you as the library will uh, actually respond to that need, you're in a very strong position in that community to meet an actual community need. So do we want to have Denise and uh, Sarah chime in here too? Sure. Yes. Um, Anyone in particular? First, I need both of them. Um, I've got you. Okay. Uh, Denise and Sarah, you're both unmuted, so feel free to uh, chime in and say whatever. <laughs> we actually have quite a few public libraries that are going to be going through this process this year. Here in RVLS, there's uh, six public libraries. And I know Sarah has quite a few more than that. Yes, I believe I have 19, if I remember correctly. So I know myself, I've been working on scheduling workshops to go through the DVD that we prepared with the commission. Now that this is ready to roll, we really are working to get it out to the libraries. We'll be going over the DVD, looking at the handouts that are explanatory sheets, and also looking at those worksheets where you'll end up with the plan. I think it's important for the library directors to look at all of this information before using it with, with your board or with the community planning team. How about you, Sarah? Are you working with individual libraries? That's one of the process I'm going to get started this week. So I think it, it looks like the regional library systems are going to be available to go through this process with you and we're going to help the individual libraries. Of course the ones that are up for accreditation this year are going to be our top priority, uh, but the other libraries that may not have a plan, it will be great for them to get started so that they're not in this short time frame. Now I, I say short time frame, we will have until October 1st and that is plenty enough time to get this done but we will need to get started right away for those libraries. So we'll be going, be available as system directors to go out to the libraries, discuss it with the board, maybe even be a facilitator for the beginning stages of the planning process with your community planning team. This is going to be a little bit different process than it's been in the past, but the guidelines were reworked to make it more accessible to our small libraries. So that makes me very excited about it. And so we're going to be working through this process as a team. That's the, the intention here in RVLS and I know um, Sarah's working on that too. As well as the other directors. If Sarah doesn't say anything, maybe we should talk about again where those where the videos are and where yeah. the guidelines are. <clears throat> well, we've all worked <clears throat> pretty hard to put together, I'm sorry, um, this plan for you. But if you already have a strategic plan, and I know that many libraries do, if it has these five elements in it, <clears throat> and it can have other stuff too, but if it has at least a community profile, a community needs assessment, a library profile or assessment, the goals and objectives, and an evaluation plan, then this will fulfill the, the uh, requirements of the accreditation guidelines and you, you do not have to go through this particular um, strategic planning process that we have developed. 
We've just developed it because we didn't want to leave people wondering what they needed to do or what, what was next. Um, but if you've already done planning, then you're fine. Let me add one comment to that. One thing is that when you look at the accreditation guidelines, you will notice that every one of the accreditation guidelines except the very first one, which says you must have a strategic plan, every one of those says which section of your strategic plan that is, addresses this guideline. So you will want to view those accreditation guidelines to see if those areas are all covered in your guideline, in your, in your strategic plan. If they're not, you may want to look at some modification before you actually have to go through the accreditation process. Now, we also, and Denise and Sarah have been very good sports about this, um, we made a video on how to do strategic planning. Um, Denise and Sarah and Eric Green and Sharon Osenga, all our system administrators, um, and I and Richard made a strategic planning video, which is linked to on our front page. This is a screenshot, uh, a snip from our front page of our website. <clears throat> And you can go there and look at it. It's about, it's not quite an hour long. And it's, it's made in sections. So you can use one section or you can look at the whole thing. Um, and it kind of explains how to use these worksheets. Um, it's being, it's processing right now. It's done. It is done? Okay. It's done. So it is available on our website right now. We also are going to have some handout sheets on our how-to guide kind of things, um, a little bit more uh, about how to do certain things that will help you with the, with the plan. So, um, and all of this will be up on our web, on our website, because uh, it's just going to work better if it's on the website. I'm going to try to put it up on the web, but keep it as um, documents so that they'll really be fill-outable. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that works. Look for a couple of blogs on both this planning process and on the guidelines themselves. One of the things that on that uh, uh, shot that Laura just had up there is that you'll see that the guidelines are also linked on our web page. Those are guidelines that are not interactive because the way this is going to happen is that Laura said earlier that we will pre-populate your statistics into the form that you will be using if you're applying for accreditation. Well, that means that each individual library that's applying for accreditation will have its own uh, password because it has unique uh, statistics on there. So the one that's on our website here that's listed that Laura is pointing to, which says guidelines, is basically a PDF of the guidelines, but not the interactive form of the guidelines. The one other thing to mention about the guidelines are that there are some links that uh, explain some of the terminology and the guidelines in case there's a misunderstanding. So all of that should be very clear. And we tried to build in as much as possible into the guidelines of explanatory material. I think you'll find that they're pretty straightforward. They are very different from the guidelines we've been using for the last six or seven years. But as Laura said, and as we've heard from our system administrators, they should be applicable to your community they do reflect the fact that you, as the library, are trying to meet the needs of your community. They are less prescriptive in terms of saying you shall have this and more uh, directional in terms of what are your local needs and what do you have to reflect or respond to those needs. So it should be, along with the, the whole idea of having a peer group that's closer, that you're in the middle of it, we think they're uh, more equitable in terms of the, the accreditation guidelines. At least that's our hope. But this first year is a test. Uh, if there are major things that don't work, we'll have to do some modifications in them. But we hope that you'll uh, give them a try. We think you'll find them very useful for your, for your community. And the tie-in with planning will make them more useful, we hope, to your community and your library. Um, I have a question. The, um the sheets that you were showing here, that these are just right on our desktop here we're showing, they're going yeah. to be on the website too for people yes. to access them. Yes. 
uh, and and we'll be getting them up, I hope, within the week. Yeah, they're not there at the so. moment. I know that the video is there, so you can start the watching that. There. Yes, the, the video is there. It's ready to go. The guidelines are there, but these um, worksheets are yeah. yet to go up. Yeah. Um, and. You know, we're we're going to be interested to he hear uh, how people view this experience, and if they think this works for them um, in terms of their strategic planning. But we really think that this this is going to hit the it's going to hit the high spots. But we are going to get um, everybody's going to get a plan, and a plan they can work with them because. Um, we will need then an accreditation to know how you did with the strategic plan too. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be uh, something that you are going to be working with for your neck through the accreditation period. Um, we do have a question that just yes. came in. Uh, Jessica Chamberlain from our Norfolk Public Library has a question. Mm -hmm. um, since the accreditation forms will be pre-made for each library, will I be able to see my particular library's guidelines and comparisons even though I'm not up for accreditation this year? That's or will good, we only be showing that's a good question. for everybody? Or, yeah. I think what I'll say is we'll have to consider if we can do that or not. That's a very good question. Because so, so for right now, you're just doing the ones that are up for we, yes. we may have We may have to do that a little later. Yeah, because um, we want to get these ones that are up right away. Uh, that, that's a good point, because I think if we sent them out to everybody initially, there would be some confusion about whether the library is up for accreditation or not. Yeah. So that's a good point, though. Um, but you can, of course, go to the Public Library Statistics or the uh, Library Compare at IMLS to look at how your library compares, um, because the numbers we're going to be using are the ones that you've reported in your public library survey. One of the things, Jessica, that uh, that you know, since you were assistant administrator uh, before this, is that you know that uh, those statistics and uh, the peer group statistics will change each year because they're based on last year's statistics, the final full year that we have from each of the public libraries. So that will change each year. But I did have a question from another library director saying, wait a minute, if I, in the past, I could look at uh, the accreditation guidelines the way you had them on your website and at least work toward that, even if I was not up for accreditation this year. So we will take that into account. I think that's another issue we have to look at. Do we have any more questions? Um, if anybody has any questions, comments, or anything, type them into the uh, questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. As you can see from Jessica's, I'm following that along here on the laptop so we can pass it on. Uh, do you want to unmute Denise and see if yeah. there's yeah. anything else to Denise and Sarah, you guys are unmuted again if you have anything to add or share. Sarah, did you have anything? No, I think we've gone about all that covered. I just think I have gotten questions as I've been out doing other workshops. I've gotten questions and there seems to be some anxiety about these new guidelines because it is so different than what we've done in the past. And and also there's concerns about, well, I'm really small. Am I actually going to be able to get to the gold level? And I think that was really making this a more equitable process and making those um, higher levels of accreditation accessible to the smaller libraries was part of the whole point. So I've been, I just want people to know as you go through this accreditation process is no, like Laura said, it's not a walk in the park, but it certainly is something that everyone can accomplish as far as getting a plan in place. And then once the plan is in place, then it's time to look at those accreditation guidelines and, and see where you fall. But it is going to be 
a real team process with the commission, with the system administrators, and the libraries to um, get through this first time for sure, and then um, we can can work a little bit longer with everybody else. You make a good point, Denise, also, and I, I think that uh, the point that you made and that Laura made earlier is that this planning is an important process, whether or not you're up for reaccreditation or whether you're even applying for accreditation or not, because you are trying to meet the needs of your community. This should strengthen you and put you in a stronger position in your community when the funders come forward and say, why should we fund you? Well, you can say, we're meeting the needs of the community. Here they are. We have done this investigation. We have done the SWOT analysis. We have met with focus groups. We have determined and heard from the community that these are their needs and here's what we're doing. Those are what funders like to hear rather than give us money because we're the public library and we've always been here. That doesn't hack it anymore. And so this is a, an important thing. I want to go back to the uh, accreditation guidelines for just a minute to thank the group that worked with us for over two years on those accreditation guidelines and uh, Steve Batty who is the current chair of the Commission did send thank you letters to all the members of the uh, of the accreditation guidelines group because not only did they work very hard with us over the years with John and Laura and myself but they actually did that on their own dime or on the library's own dime because we didn't have money to pay for transportation or meals. Everybody sort of fed themselves and came on their own time and their own, their own dime. So we really do appreciate what they have done. It was, was uh, quite daunting and I think they came up with quite a useful document. Well, we hope everybody will take a look at the um at the video, it was a very interesting experience for us. Um, <laughs> and we're so photogenic, you'll see it. <laughs> you know, we're, we're trying to, to expand and, and use new media when it's appropriate and everything. And um, Denise and Sarah and Sharon and Eric all came in and everybody was a really good sport. Um, this is Denise. There's a reason I am not an actor. <laughs> cameras, cameras are not good for me. <laughs> oh, come on. Denise. Welcome to the club. You look very nice on camera. What did you think, I Sarah? I didn't have to talk. No. <laughs> it didn't bother me in that much. I kind of fell back in some of my old high school speech routines, and I had to get up and do that. Yeah. Oh, so you had fun, huh? <laughs> I don't know if I could say fun, but... Uh, well, we hope it's going to be helpful to people. We hope some of the handouts and the explanatory material will be helpful. And filling out the worksheets um, will make this, will kind of streamline this process. Um, so... Let me use a metaphor that Laura used when we first started putting this planning process together. and. She said that, you know, we could, we could go the route of doing the rather long and somewhat laborious task of a really uh, intensive strategic planning process, which if you look at some of the strategic planning process gurus, they'll say, well, you should use a minimum of maybe six months to do this or whatever. The one before that said, well, it's going to take about a year or whatever. Well, Laura described the process that this group has come up with as the drive-in window approach as opposed to the full banquet approach. We hope that, that this is useful, that it will provide a structure for you. If your library feels that it wants to do more or do this more extensively, that's fine. But this is our drive-up window, our drive-in, drive drive-up window approach to the thing. And I think that's a good metaphor to use. We hope it makes it simpler for you or at least digestible for you and that you can move ahead in your communities. But please, we uh, contact us, contact your system administrators if we can help in any way, as Denise has already issued the invitation. We'd all be happy to come out and help you with the process. Well, we do have one comment from uh, the audience that uh, Susan Wilkins saying that it's very helpful. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> well, I hope so. <clears throat> but, but don't let this throw you. Don't be afraid of it, because it's not really scary when you get into it. Change is good.
Is that right? Okay, we <laughs> quote you on that. Maybe quote sure. Yes. I haven't heard that before. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be hey, any any last minute comments, questions? Uh, enter them in here. Uh, good webinar questions interface there. And if not, it doesn't look like anything urgent has been coming through. If you do have any questions as this process goes on, ask. You know, um, you can contact the um, your regional system offices. Um, you can call me. You can call Richard. Um, And, um, you know, we, we are interested to know what your experience is with this and what you think of it. And um, if you just want to blow off steam about it because you're really ticked, call me. <laughs> yeah, call Laura. Don't call me. Call me. Um, I'm cool with that. And, um, but we, we really did do it because we thought this was going to be helpful. And it was going to be a really constructive way to approach the whole idea of accreditation. So let us know. Okay. Oh, it doesn't look like anything urgent came in while uh, we were uh, talk. Laura was talking here. So here we go. I think we will officially um, wrap up this session for today. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Sarah and Denise online, and Richard and Laura for coming and talking about this. Um, like I said, big changes for libraries in Nebraska, but nothing too um, terrifying. We hope. <laughs> and there's lots of help available. Ask, come, for, you know, look for it. Um, get what you need so you can um, get your accreditation done. All right, so thank you very much for attending this week's episode of Encompass Live. Um, and it was recorded, so it will be available afterwards if you need to want to listen to it again and see some of the things we're on here or if you want to share it with any of your colleagues. I hope you'll join us next week when it is our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Once a month he comes on to our show and does, um, he's a technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission. And once a month he comes on and shares any of the tech news of the past month. And that will be next week. And he has, um, it, we'll also have on the show with him, Richard Byrne, who writes the, um, and maintains the Free Technology for Teachers blog. So if you work with teachers in your area, or if you are a library um, in, a, in a school, this would be something really good for you, um, sharing some of the things that um, would be good for teachers to use online. So sign up for that for us next, with us next week. And also, um, If you are interested in, let's see if I can, great, yeah, there we go. Uh, Encompass Live is on Facebook. We have a like button here for that. So if you are a big Facebook user, hopefully eventually it'll come up. You can follow us on Facebook, and we have announcements of when we have new shows coming up. Um, when recordings are available, any links or anything that we find that may be related to any of the episodes we've had on. Looks like it's having a trouble getting to Facebook at the moment. But you can follow us there on Facebook, so we definitely encourage that. Um, and look for blogs on both the accreditation guidelines and the planning. Yes, process. on the Commission's homepage we have our blog here, so they will be doing updates to that when they have all these things out there, when those um, help sheets are put up. Um, the video is already available, as we said, it's right here um, linked, and it should bring you right to I will YouTube. Get start. <laughs> um, YouTube, where we host all of our um, library commission videos. Oh, wait, there we go. There's our Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> so, as you can see here, we announce when new shows are coming and everything, so definitely follow us on Facebook. So, other than that, I think we are wrapped up for today. Thank you very much for attending, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. bye.